UFOs in my life? The answer is yes. Maybe I am not a soul and because I have no proof, if I am the one who is putting the money to institution life to say NASA. Jaya Shri Radeshyam and welcome. The moon landing, real, fake, a hoax. Yes or not, this is a big topic since many of the Western followers of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Gaudiya Vaishnavism is people that have been learning through the books of Swami Bhaktivedanta, also called Srila Prabhupada. The moon landing hoax. Today we will read and comment page called krishna.org chant and be happy famous line of swami bhaktivedanta and in this page by bidura mahatma das wrote on january 21 2024 we will read this and i will comment from my point of view and from the point of my own investigations in terms of the moon the text wrote here that is quoting the words of bhaktivedanta swami so we have here first NASA moon landing hoax explained by Srila Prabhupada. Even you go to the moon planet, this is Bhagavata. Before going to your moon planet, here is the information. Anywhere you go, rascal, these things will follow. Janma, Mrityu, Jara, Vyadhi. Bhagavad Gita 13.9 And inconveniences. You will have to suffer. One who is intelligent then, where shall I find real happiness? That is Krishna. Therefore, one required to be very, very intelligent to become Krishna conscious. 73 New Delhi If you go to the moon or to any other planet, it doesn't matter where, you will always slave of Janma to, to be born, Mrityu to death, Jara, and Biadi can't travel 95 million miles in four days at 18,000 miles per hour. My challenge is that the moon is beyond the sun. First planet is sun and then moon. So if the sun is 93 million miles and moon is above the sun, 1,600,000, then how they can go to the moon planet in four days? Basically here, just by number, we see that it's impossible that they will reach the moon in four days as the Apollo 11 claims. Our distance based on the understanding of Swami Bhaktivedanta. Mm? This is not how science is telling the distance. And now, let me put it, quite, put it very clear, I don't believe that much in science anymore. The most I study, the most I see the corporations behind science, the most I see people of science who discover things that are contradictory to the status quo or what's supposed to be, let's say, then they are desecrated and they are out of the science circles. They are bullied publicly for their words. So it makes me think that something is a little bit strange with science, that maybe the idea of science is correct. I think it's quite possible that as the science needs money to go to the experiments and to buy everything they need for the studies, the ones who are putting the money for this are possible corporation or institutions who have some agenda. This is my understanding. And that agenda you must to fulfill with the studies that you will bring. So basically the agenda, I hear this or I read years ago from one scientist who was explaining something about this topic. If I am the one who is putting the money to one institution like to say NASA or for any experiments that I need, then I will throw, for example, this project to 100 scientifics. They will start studying and will bring to me the results. Me, as an institution company or a private who need the results, will filter which scientist will get the money, the price or the contract for the work. Let's not forget that in the end of the Second World War, America took all the Nazis, scientists, to their own country, to the United States. And there they have a contract that we will not judge you, you will not be in prison, you will not be 
murder or killed by your war crimes if you, with your knowledge on science, will work for the government of the United States of America. This is part of the history. Anyone can dig this information and they will find. This is no conspiration, sounds like, but this is true, it's a fact. From there, NASA in somehow is coming from, by the way. So, we have many things. Then we can see, just by this part of history I narrate now here, many agencies can select exactly what they want. You can bring the same details to several agencies, they will bring their results, every result will be a little bit different and some of the results can be something that is favorable for your own projects, so you will choose that one. This is how it works. Then, because something say that is based on science doesn't mean that it's the absolute truth, but it's just partially truth, as anything else. That's why scientists are saying that global warming is a fact, while other scientists say that it's not, that there is no proof. So how the science can stand on both sides? It's because also this is something that is a bit relative, a lot relative, on the uh, results that you will find. Uh, experiments will not give exactly the same results every, every time. This is not true. We have already discussed this point in many places. The Sun is first, then the Moon, then Mars, Jupiter and so on. The Sun is supposed to be 93 million miles above the surface of the Earth. And from the Srimad Bhagavatam we understand that the Moon is 1,600,000 miles above the Sun. Therefore, the distance between Earth and the Moon will be about 95 million miles. So, if a space capsule were traveling at a speed of 18,000 miles per hour, how could it reach the Moon in four days? At that speed, going to the Moon will take at least seven months. That a space capsule on a Moon excursion has reached the Moon in four days is therefore impossible. So far, we understand from Vedic literature, the Moon is the second planet, the Sun is the first planet. If we consider like that, then Moon is beyond the Sun planet. Okay, here I have a small um, parenthesis. What we have here is graphic of the Vedic cosmology. This is basically what we read through Shastra. How it is, all this creation. And we can see here, let me open this area. Here we see the moon. You see in the center of the, of, of the screen is the moon and has a orbit uh, where is doing rounds around Mount Meru. The Mount Meru is going up till Brahmaloka. And the Sun is here on the right side of the image. It's supposed to be that the Sun and the Moon are very close each other. And by the way, another interesting detail on this topic is that the Earth, as we know, Earth, planet Earth, is flat. flat. Just as you can see in the center of the graphic of this image, you can see the Earth. And if we compare this with the scientific point of view of Earth, we get something absolutely different. This Earth is supposed to be like a balloon, a ball, while the Vedic image of Earth is flat, actually, is flat. And what is interesting about this is that this flat Earth, even it sounds like a dumb conspiration theory, this flat Earth also appears on the Bible. The Bible claims that the Earth is flat and on top of the Earth is a dome who is protecting the Earth from the ocean, galactic ocean. Outside is water and we are protected by a dome and inside the dome they say in the Bible that is sun, stars and the moon rotating around the earth and not the earth rotating around the sun. And here, one more time, we see the Vedic Cosmovision. This is not only what Prabhupada say, but this is Vedic Cosmovision. Mm, I have been studying uh, different texts speaking about Cosmovision, growth by Indians and growth by Europeans. Every single book is explaining that based on Vedas, the earth is flat. 
Now for many, this understanding of the Earth, flat Earth, is something totally out of the picture, since we have been brainwashed that the Earth is something like this, like a, a balloon, a globe, right? But let's not forget that many of the things that the science have been claiming, such as the no existence of God, are not real, and they are wrong in many things, and also let's not forget that the science is changing their paradigm, their ideas, time to time. And this they say that is the nature of science to progress and to grow every day. What is absolutely correct, with the exception of claiming that this is the final truth, I think that is not correct if they are changing all the time. You cannot say this is the true and tomorrow is another true. No, true is only one and it's transcendental. And if we compare the philosophy and the holy books of the world, we will find always that the real idea of the earth is always flat. Can be the earth flat? Yes or no? What do you think about this? Can the earth be flat? Really? Yes or not? If not, then how we put together the idea of our chastra, our books, the same books like the Mahapuran, Srimad Bhagavatam, who tell us that Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. The same book is telling us the earth is flat. So can I, this is a question I, I, I made for to, to all of you. Can I take partially truth from the chastra or I should believe everything from the Shastra. So the Shastra is correct only when the Shastra say that Krishna is Bhagavan, but the Shastra is not correct when say the earth is flat. Uh, in my opinion, I feel like this point of view is a little bit easy. It's uh, comfy to get this point of view, say no, the earth is not flat, this is wrong. But then uh, somebody based on the same came to any sadaka student of the Shastra and the Bhagavatam to say if I ask to you please listen attentively if I ask you what is the proof or where it reads that Krishna is God you will say Srimad Bhagavatam Bhagavad Gita Bhagavad Gita Krishna say I am Swayam Bhagavan the supreme personality of God I am the beginning the middle and the end Krishna explained clearly in Bhagavad Gita that he is God, supreme God, not just Deva, but is Deva Deva, is the supreme God. So, on the same way, you can answer, or you will answer, in the Srimad Bhagavatam explains clearly, indeed, you will say, or many will say, the creator of this universe, Brahma, Brahma Dev, he prays to Krishna, Govinda Hadi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Govinda Hadi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Govinda, you are the Adi Purush, the supreme being, the original Adi Purush, Tamaham Bajamis. To you, I worship. I worship you because you, Govinda, you are the Adi Purush, the supreme being, the supreme God, Swayam Bhagavan, the supreme God. So, I will give you this pramana about God. Krishna is God. But then the other person can ask, ask to me or to you, to anyone. So, the earth is round or is flat? And you say, it's round. And I reply, but your Chastra, the same book, the same book, Bhagavatam, who say that Krishna is God, say that the earth is flat. Do you believe what is convenient for you? Do you believe what is convenient to the time, space and circumstance to you? You don't believe the Shastra, so you have no Shraddha? I will ask openly, you have no Shraddha in Bhagavatam then? If the cosmovision of the Vedas explain on Puranas, explain that this is the, what is in my back, is the form of the universe, then based on what you think the earth is round and we are gravitating going around the sun when it's clearly explained that everything is around earth so how, how we put this together i feel honestly this is cheating to say i believe in bhagavatam but i don't believe in this part of the bhagavatam so you believe in bhagavatam or no is bhagavatam the manifestation, literary, the book manifestation, the philosophical manifestation of Bhagavan, yes or not. This appears in the first book of Bhagavatam. The Srimad Bhagavatam is God himself, is Narayam himself, 
then Narayan is imperfect. Maybe Narayan is blind or Narayan has one arm only. I agree with the Vedas, yes or not, or I am more intelligent, or I think these people in some agency somewhere in NASA or whatever, in Europe, in China, whatever, is those human beings who still don't understand even God. They don't understand even their soul, Jiva. They don't even start to be vegetarian. That people is more wise and has more knowledge. They had more knowledge than Veda Vyasa. Tell me, do you think that? Do you think that people has more knowledge than Veda Vyasa? Or we have been misunderstanding the Shrima Bhagavatam. And the Shrima Bhagavatam says flat but doesn't mean flat. means something else. And this is cheating on my opinion. Honestly. I have been asking to different gurus and sadhus about this topic and nowhere is many agree that the, this concept is a concept. They say this is a concept to explain things. It's not the truth. The truth is that the earth is round and is gravitating around the sun. I think it's something wrong with that kind of ideas because Bhagavatam is not saying this is a concept. Let's interpret it with our great intelligence because we are so intelligent that we can interpret the Bhagavatam. This is not true. This is not true and should not be accepted. Maybe for this time of Kali Yuga, where the brainwash of the science is everywhere, it's difficult to stand in our philosophy, in our path of truth. Perfect wisdom is in the Bhagavatam and everything Bhagavatam say is true, yes or not. Otherwise, how I can believe what Bhagavatam say about Krishna? Maybe the Vedic cosmology explained on Bhagavatam is not correct. Maybe the explanation and the vision of Krishna Bhagavan also is not correct. Maybe he was just an historical figure that maybe not even historical because much proof of historical things do we have. Maybe Gauranga Mahaprabhu also is not Swayam Bhagavan. Maybe he's just a philosopher and as many call him just a fool of religious ideas. Maybe I am not a soul and because I have no proof and the only proof that I see with my eyes is that the people die and that's it. Maybe I'm not a soul. Maybe I am not eternal as the Bhagavatam said. So stand in your point. What is your point? You try to please everyone? To please everyone is for only two things. Gold and prostitutes. <laughs> 